What is up everybody? This is Mike with Tiny Life Big Mission and this week in the Word we are finally wrapping up our series on what is the Bible. I hope you have your Bible right with you. Let's jump in. Welcome to the final concluding episode of this series, What is the Bible? I just wanted to first say thanks for uh, your support through this. I've never been on camera before. I've never uh, led a Bible study before. Um, in fact, this is the first series that I've ever done on, on, this is the first of anything I've ever done like this. And it's been an adjustment for me, not just in learning the, the technology side of it, but also learning um, how to prepare and uh, deliver material that God's given me to study. So thanks. Uh, I, I feel like this was definitely part of my year of preparation. Um, God has put this work on my heart, and it, it's it's interesting. If I ever start to doubt that you know what I'm doing and and if it's of God or not, it's real easy to quickly look back and go, well, if I was doing this for myself, I would have been discouraged a long time ago. But the reason I know that this is work that God is putting on my heart is because I'm learning to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost and learning how to follow it. I don't know why God called me to this work. I, I honestly, I've asked that question a thousand times. Why me? I'm nothing special. But I can tell you that since my calling, since since God called me to, to start my year of preparation, he has done a ton of work in my life. Uh, I'm nowhere near the same person as I was when I began this journey, and I'm going to continue to grow. Thank you for, for your support, but please be patient with me as I continue to grow and learn in this. This is not easy for me. I, I'm a bit of a private person, and I don't like exposing myself in this way. It's not easy, so uh, be patient uh, as I make this journey so public. And bottom line, <laughs> I'm a human. I'm gonna make mistakes. Um, I, I, I've already made a mistake. Last week I made a, a statement and it wasn't an intentional thing, it was just a slip of words, but um, there was something that was off. If you haven't seen that video, I'll post it up here. Go check it out. Um, see if you can see what, what I said that was wrong. <laughs> Comment if you catch it. The big point behind that is just don't let any of my words be your final authority. In fact, I would say don't let any of any man's word be your final authority. Let the word of God be your final authority. This is not a conclusive study of all that God has placed on my heart to, to study and share. In fact, we didn't even go over the table of contents. <laughs> it's just a small piece, just a, a, a cornerstone, if you will, of a foundation. This study was to establish that the word of God is real. It is pure. It's true. And it's holy and it has power. It's God's words that are given to us. God has protected and preserved his word as he promised he would. So I guess in short that the purpose of this study has been to develop an understanding or, or a common belief that this, this Bible is God's word and that is essential for us to understand deeper and, and much heavier concepts that are in the Bible. Alright, so I'm going to go through and do a high level uh, rundown of everything that we went over in the previous videos of this series. And I'm not going to try to be too redundant, but it is important for us to recap it to where I can kind of tie them all together. At the beginning of this series, we looked at the Bible and what it is, how it's comprised, and how the world perceives the Bible. Um, we even looked at how some Christian, and I say that term fairly loosely, uh, how some Christian institutions define the Bible. Okay, so then we looked at the purpose of the Bible. Now, there are a lot of arguments about what the Bible is and what the purpose of it is, what it's about, but ultimately the Bible is God's spoken word recorded by man that God has kept preserved and pure. Uh, this is fundamental. 
the three themes that God put on my heart uh, to share teaches us that the Bible is about the war between God and Satan and how man was attacked by God's enemy and in that attack man fell. The Bible is the truth that God gave us to point us to Him. Its purpose is to show us how we sin against Him, and it teaches us how we can obtain redemption through Him. And all throughout this, God has given us free will and allowed us to choose what, essentially, <laughs> what direction we want to take. And the reason why He gave us that free will is because if He wants us to want to worship Him, to choose Him, out of our own free will. So let's go over the three themes again real quickly. It is not possible for there to be one error or one lie in this book. Either God gave us his word and it is just as he is without error, without sin, without any blemish, or God's weak and he wasn't able to preserve his word as he promised that he would and therefore it does have errors and if that's the case then none of this even matters we should just go eat drink and be merry and do whatever the heck we want because there is no god who is strong enough to save us and to keep his word this is where faith comes in you either believe that the bible is real and that god's words are real and that god is real and in doing so, you accept his grace through faith and you walk in that faith. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, that it is not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. 2 Corinthians 5.7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Romans 10.17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The way that the Bible defines faith is actually found in the Bible. Look at Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In the War of Two Kingdoms, we looked at the fact that there are beings out there that are not humans. They are aliens, if you will. Um, they're not of this world. In fact, they're not even of this dimension. Some are good and some are evil. Um, they have free will just as we have free will. We don't fully understand it, but Satan has declared that he will overthrow God's throne. And that started a war, and a third of the heavenly hosts that were there in heaven with God uh, decided that they would take Satan's side. Ever since his fall, Satan has tried to imitate and infiltrate everything of God's. The war is ongoing, and our very souls hang in the balance. Through God's word, we know how it will end, but it's our choice on which side we want to serve. The Bible says that there will be none without excuse. In Romans 1, 18 through 25, the Bible says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Next, we looked at condition of the heart, and everything in this world comes down to a condition of our heart. Every choice that we make is a reflection of what is important to us. God can see down into the intrinsic side of ourselves that no one knows. Sometimes we don't even know our, ourself. In that core is our motives, the things that make us want to do whatever it is that we do. The Bible says that our hearts are wicked and that they can't be trusted. It says that in our hearts is where we commit sin, and more importantly, that in our hearts is where we believe unto salvation. Being a Christian isn't something that you do on the outside. It's 
not a spoken word. It's not even being good or, or living a righteous life. In fact, I would say that it's not even something that you do at all. It's a belief that you hold in your heart, in that, that center of you, that, that motivation, that core thing. It's, it's that belief. Romans 10, 9 says that if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Most importantly, we looked at what the Bible has to say about itself. Now, the Bible says that it is written by God, that it is true, that it is pure, that it is holy, that it's settled in heaven, that it is eternal, and that it is preserved. You can trust the Bible and know that it is real because it is God. And I don't mean the actual Bible, the binding, the pages, that, that part of it, but the word, the actual word is God, the spoken word, the, the words that are recorded in the Bible. Those words are God's words, and that is God. 1 John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. In this, I want to share a story, <clears throat> and it comes from my previous life. Before uh, I started doing this Tiny Life Big Mission project, um, before my calling that God placed on my heart, I had a really good job in a Fortune 500 company in upper management making really good money and on a very good career path. I left all that to pursue this calling. In that, I had somebody who I worked with who, um, as I was working out leaving my company, um, he had come to me and he... Um, had asked me some questions. He was kind of struggling with some things in his personal life, and I'm not gonna get into too many details. Um, but he was kind of struggling with some things in his personal life and was asking me some questions. And it was interesting. I'm not somebody who in my past life has ever witnessed to anybody. I didn't share my beliefs. Like I said before, I, I'm a pretty private person. I don't open up very, I mean, I can talk to people, but that doesn't mean that I share myself with people. Um, and the Holy Spirit put me in a position where it was giving me words and, and I was speaking truth to him like I've never spoke truth to anybody. Um, I was witnessing to him and, and pointing him to God and pointing him to the Bible and was giving him really sound advice that, that was nothing that I did. It was just given to me in the moments that he asked. It was supernatural. It was, I don't know how to explain it. As I was giving him this instruction, he immediately started to resist it by making comments like, well, you know, I, yeah, that sounds pretty good. And, and I was like, no, this, this isn't just pretty good. This is absolute. This is the truth. Um, he had a, a Buddhist belief and, and thought that through enlightenment, he could, he could, you know, get regeneration. I pleaded with him to listen to me. I pleaded with him to, to hear the words that I was speaking to him. And I told him that this was the only way. And he just rejected it and, and didn't really seem interested in it. Um, and prior to that, he had been somebody who called me quite regularly to talk with me, to be my friend, that kind of thing. Over two months, he came to me about five different times seeking advice, and five different times I pleaded with him to listen to the gospel I was sharing with him, to, to change his life course, to get his life right. Unfortunately, a couple months after I left my job, uh, I got news that not only did he never convert, but he passed away. So he died lost. The whole purpose behind me sharing this with you is because I want to express to you how delicate this is, how delicate our life is. We think that there's so much security. We think there's so much time. We see, think that there's so much availability given to us that, that, that we're not mortal. And, and I think all of us understand logically that we are mortal and someday it's gonna go. 
and that we're not going to be able to take this, this life, the things that we've built here with us. But we don't truly believe that because if we did, we would live differently. Whether you're Christian or not, you would live differently. And I share this just because if nothing else, maybe it'll soften your heart to be able to hear. Maybe it won't. Now, if you're not a believer and you've made it thus far in my video series, or maybe this is just the first time you're watching my video series, this may seem a little crazy to you. In fact, it probably doesn't make any sense at all. And it's not your fault that it doesn't make any sense. It's that way by design. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.12, Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. The we that it's talking about in that verse is Christians, people who have accepted God. We have not received the spirit of the world. Verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So what the Bible is saying in that is that the, the understanding of spiritual things is not given to, to men who are not of God. And, and by that I, don't, I mean their faith is not founded in God. And the reason why it's not given to them is because of their, their minds are of the world. They haven't had a change in their life yet, if you will. If you don't know your creator, but you want to understand these things that you can't seem to quite grasp, it's not far from you. It won't happen <laughs> the way that you necessarily want it to, or in the time manner, the, the speed of things that you want it to, but God will reveal himself to you if you submit yourself to him as your Lord and Savior. In short, the Bible says that we have all sinned, and a sin is doing something against the, the law of God. Um, we've all sinned, and even if we only had one sin, that one sin is enough to make us guilty of every sin that exists. James 2.10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. 1 John 3, 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So one of God's attributes is that he is just. And what just means is that he executes justice perfectly. He is just. That means that if you were to think about it in an in a earthly sense, that if somebody were to do something wrong against you, they couldn't just be set free for it. Every sin has a consequence, and God has declared that the consequence of sin is death. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what that verse is saying is that when you sin, the punishment that comes upon you is death, and that death is a permanent separation from God in a place of torment. Or there's a gift that God has allowed for us that is a gift of eternal life and that is obtained through Jesus Christ. So you can essentially either try and cover this yourself knowing that it will never be enough to justify yourself or you can accept the gift of that God gave his creation. God sent his self as his son to manifest into human form, to take on humanity to where he could know all the temptations, everything that we know it as a human yet to live without sin. Jesus chose to give his life, to lay it down, to be that payment, that penalty of death. He, he, he basically, if you think about it in a term of court, he stepped in to the judge and said, yes, his penalty is death and yes, he is guilty, but I'm gonna pay his sentence. I'm going to take that death upon me. That way he doesn't have to pay it, I'll pay it. And essentially, with that penalty, he, he died and he went to hell. He 
was there for three days as the Bible prophesied he would be, and on the third day he rose again, having conquered Satan, sin, and death for us. The Bible says that if you believe in this and that you confess him as your Lord, that you will be saved. Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay, so if you are a believer, I have one question to ask you, and please, I, this is something I, I've meditated on myself and that I took upon myself to think about, and I just would ask that you don't reject it straight out. Think about it. Meditate on it. Let it... Let your, let your heart steep in it a little bit. Give some time for the words to sink in before you just answer it. And that question is, have you given yourself over to the God of the Bible? Or have you given yourself over to religion, a system, some kind of church? Um, have you put your faith in a preacher or a teaching more than the God of the Bible? Christians can believe in religion or a teaching or a teacher and those can all be good things but they may not be in fact I would say that they are not God they're not God they're not the God of the Bible they may even think these Christians may even think that they they, they know God because of what they've been taught in church or from the things that they like hearing that they've listened to but it's not the God of the Bible Jesus says that there will be many that show up at the, at the judgment seat that say that they knew God and that they did things in his name and he's, he will say to them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. That means that the Bible is telling you there are people who think that they are saved, who are Christian, and they're not. In 2 Corinthians 13.5, Paul writes, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Now this is the Apostle Paul who wrote this letter, and I don't want you to lose track of what and who the Apostle Paul is. He was a Jew of Jews. He was one of the religious guys back in the day before Jesus came. And he ended up in his belief of his religion and his teachings that he had been taught, he believed that Jesus wasn't the Messiah that came for the Jewish people, and as such, he was murdering Christians. He was hunting them down and putting them to death because of their faith. And the Bible says in Acts that Paul kicked against the pricks of his heart. What that means is that God was convicting him in his heart, telling him that the things that he was doing that he was the, the, the things that he was doing was wrong, and Paul kicked against them. We have that same ability in Christianity to go, well, I'm going to reject this because of I don't like it. It doesn't fit up with what I've been taught or the teachings that I like. And as a Christian, Paul comes back after he was converted, and he says to examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. It's critical for us to make sure that we are standing in the faith that is built on the Bible and nothing less. It is the Bible that is the Word of God, and it's the Bible that guides us unto our salvation. It's through Jesus alone. Some of you may be hearing some things for the first time and, and, and not understand them. The good news is that God promises that if you seek understanding, that he will reveal it to you. Again, this comes back to a matter of the heart. If the true motive of your heart is to prove that what you believe in your heart, that God has pricked you in your heart <laughs> to, to let go of, if, if, if you're trying to prove that what you think is right over the word of God, he's not going to give you wisdom that way. But if you open your heart and say, I just want to know your truth, God. I want to I want to understand your word more clearly, and I'm I'm seeking you and the condition of your heart is is open. God will reveal his truth to you. I can I can tell you from where I stand right now. I held some beliefs that were inaccurate. I had to examine my faith and realize that Although I was saved, I was holding on to some teachings that didn't line up with the Bible, and I had to let go of them. 
James 1 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and unabradeth not, and it shall be given him. Deuteronomy 4 29. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou shalt seek him with all thine heart and all thine soul. The Bible is not just a list of wise metaphors. It's not some outdated, archaic, sexist book. It wasn't written by men just to where those men could make a bunch of rules to, to get themselves power. Although, although there have been men throughout history that have been recorded as trying to gain power by wielding the Bible in an incorrect fashion. Although we can benefit from all the Bible, not all the Bible is written directly to us. The Bible is a unified work that must be carefully read and studied and divided into its correct context. God created the physical realm that we live in and that we can see, taste, and touch. Uh, this world is cursed and will end in death. God has also created a spiritual realm and that realm is uh, invisible and, and, and eternal. Throughout history, God has allowed us views into this spiritual realm to show us what he wants us to know. Um, he has interacted with his creation by giving himself to that creation in book form. In that word, he's called them, his creation, to worship him and to serve him um, as he is the holy God and creator of all. God allows us to choose, not in word, but in action. God is most interested in our heart's motive, that, that, that true reason. Not what we say or what we show with fake action, but the innermost part, that, that true motive that only God knows. The Bible refers to the word heart 830 times, and most importantly, it says that our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, and that we can't even know them ourselves. Everything with God comes down to an issue of the heart. Matthew 13, 15. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and they should understand with their heart and should be converted, and I should heal them. Just like our physical bodies need food, our spiritual bodies need food to strengthen us spiritually. The Bible says that the, the Word of God is the bread of life. Christians who want to please God with their life, they need to have a regular spiritual diet of God's Word. Those who are not believers, or maybe interested, or maybe even a little bit skeptical about this God and this, this Bible, they should read it for themselves to see what it says. If you're Christians, you should be reading it for your, your daily supplements, your food, <laughs> your strength of your spirit. Things are spiritually discerned, as the Bible says. And you can't discern them without a strengthening your spirit. We're going to talk a lot more in future videos about a lot of the things that we've just briefly covered in this. We're going to get deeper into scripture and deeper into understanding. My hope is that this has been an encouragement to you. That this will definitely pique your interest and make you uh, curious for what is to come. Ultimately, that's what's up this week. I hope to see you next week in this word. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>